Hi everyone, David Mailer here and today I want to show you something really super simple and really cool. I'm going to show you how to create a spinning scatter plot that's very helpful to go and take uh, a bunch of attributes of a field like if you've got two, three, four, five, seven, whatever different attributes and to put them in a box, in a 3D box and display them and then be able to rotate it to look for, you know, areas of interest, possible insights, possible differentiation as you go between the different scatter plots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right here. Basically it starts off with you just install this package called RGL. Okay, Right here is the line for that. If you don't have it in there, once you have it in there, once you've done this and you run that, then next is uh, you load in the library just like you do for anything else. Again we're in R and R Studio. Okay. Next, I bring in my data set right here. So obviously I have to have this library read Excel because I'm using uh, an Excel spreadsheet to bring in this data. Again, this data, test data three right here, I can click here or I can click here because I've already done that, is the bike share data set from the University of California at Irving at their data science department, their machine language or machine learning lab. So you can go in here and you can see the different columns, you know, humidity, temperature, wind speed, all these factors in here. So I go back here and once I've done this and I've got the library loaded in, I've loaded in my uh, data set, you can see right here that uh, this is where I load in the library and then this is where I load in the data set right here. This is actually the URL for it and you put that in and it's putting it into a vector called test data through a data frame you can call it and uh, then what I do is from this I use plot3d which is a function of RGL and I'm using three different columns so I've got count which is total sales, temperature which is temp and holiday, zero or one, is it a holiday or not, that's what it is color equals blue, size equals three, I could make the size bigger if I want you know you can change that up, we'll try it a little bit here in a second so once I've got that in there, all I have to do now is actually just run this one line, plot3d. So let's do that and see what happens. Watch what happens here. You run it, bam, there we go. We have a 3D box. Now look at this. What's interesting is it's not just a box, it's rotatable. Look at that. That's cool. Let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Now look at that. That's really cool. So what you have here, if you look at this right, is holidays going this way, right? So we have one and we have zero because that's the only two uh, data points in that holiday field. It's either it's a holiday, one, or it's not and it's zero. So let's look at this. One is up here. So we got, look at that. We've got data up here and we got data down here. Obviously, we got very few holidays and a lot of days that aren't. We know that it's normal for the year. But when we look at this, we can actually go and superimpose this on each other and see if there's some meaning or not here. So you can see the almost superimposing. See how it hides the holiday inside it? So all of the holiday points sit inside of the, uh, or all the yeah ones for holiday sit inside the zeros. Now we can go and do this with different data points to try, and, or different fields, and try and get more meaning from them. But that's just kind of cool, okay? And you can, we can go and play back and forth with that and try and see um, different things. Let's bring that back here. So here it is minimized again. You can see it right here. Okay. And again, we had holiday um, right there. We had temperature, which is this one. And then we had count, which is across here. So you can actually look and see, you know, is there a pattern between temperature and count? Yes, there is a reverse pattern. As temperature goes up, there's more sales. Um, and then the other point is holidays going this way. So the holidays, it, whether it is or is not, falls in line with what's going on there. Just there's fewer data points. It's much harder to tell the correlation here that you can clearly see down here. Um, so if we were to close this out and let's just change this around again. So let's say I wanted to make the size equal to a four. Let's do that. And we wanted to make the color, I don't know, green. And we've got count, temperature, and holiday. What else do we have in here we could pull from? We've got weekday. Let's do that. So if we bring in weekday, let's go back here. Instead of holiday, let's get rid of holiday. Weekday has 0 through 6. Sunday is 0. 
Monday is one, Tuesday is two, and so on through Saturday, which is six. So let's bring that in, and then let's run this and see what it does. So we put that in here, we hit Control and Enter, and look at it, it looks like a mess, but see when you pull it this way, let's bring it up bigger so you can see it better. When you pull it up sideways like this, you can actually see the striations for the uh, zero through six, so that's your weekday right there, and you can see that, but what we can do is we can see are they all the same thing on top of each other. We could look for that, and they do kind of look pretty similar. Um, we do have some outer liars. Are they all? Yeah, they're pretty uniform. It's that it looks pretty uniform to me. And we could look at that and see is it heavier in the middle on some of these, and not in the others. We could also do some other different box plots to see that to compare them. So that's kind of an interesting way of looking at things. Um, let's bring that back to here. And let's close that one down. Green makes it kind of hard to see. I like blue. I think that was better. So let's bring that back to blue. It's up to you. That's a personal preference as to what you think is better. And we can go back in here. Let's go back and look at the data set again. What about a working day? Working day is 0 or 1. That might be interesting. Season. we got season is 1 through what? 2. Okay. Or more. So we got three, four seasons through the year. So let's go and... Uh, uh, or three seasons, I think. What do they have in here for that? Let's see. Oop. We got season three, two, three. Do we have a season four? Yep, season four. Okay, so let's try season. Let's see what that does in here. So what if we took and put season in here? Uh, let's do that and just see what that does. Let's put that and maybe what we'll do is we'll make the size a two. All right, so you can see the difference there, and we just want that one line, so let's run that. And here we go, let's make it bigger. And see, when you have it smaller, it puts the plots closer together, so it's a little bit easier to see, especially when you make smaller plot or smaller dots like this. But you can see here, there is a difference between them. So remember, we're looking at seasons. So look at the difference between the seasons. You can see this season here clearly has more sales here than here. This season's pretty, well, a little bit more on this side than that side. That one's definitely on that side. And this top one is kind of hard to see on this. But that's kind of a neat way to see that. Now, if we bring this size down to this, you can really see it in here. Um, and maybe what we need to do is just make bigger plot so maybe if we make this a five let's see what that does and we run it now it looks a mess here kind of on this one because the plots are too big but watch boom that's actually not a bad size for those plots and it makes them really stand out much better so now we can clearly see this one this season uh, was it season one I believe let's see here we go there's season one two three and four so season one is clearly uh, going to have a lot of activity in the lower temperature range and lower sales. So that's probably going to be your winter right there. Then you've got one that's kind of in between. So that's probably going to be your spring. Summer is going to be here. So you got more sales in the upper end and less in the lower end because there's less days that have low temperatures that will qualify for that. And then you've got season four, which is fall, which is pretty similar to spring, but just flip it over. And the reason being is it's more widespread, but a little bit more here. So this one is more widespread, but a little bit more here. And you can see it there. That's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, to look at your data and look for quick, you know, insights and stuff, and then you can put them on top of each other, and that's your total data set right there. Look at that. Count, um, temperature, and season all together. So that's just a pretty cool way to look at stuff and uh, see it in a three-dimensional way. Sometimes it's things that you don't see in two-dimensional, you can see it in three-dimensional. It starts to pop out to you. Especially here, you could see the difference between the seasons. I could be looking at something else. I could be looking at uh, a car, and I could be looking at uh, four-cylinder, six-cylinder, eight-cylinder, and maybe turbos or hybrids. So I could have four striations based on that. It could be anything, this data. 
um, sneaker types, you know, high tops, low tops, uh, canvas, leather. You could the, the possibilities are limitless. You could have diamonds. You could have carrots, carrot size, cut clarity, all these things, you, and you can divide up your data by that by different attributes of your fields, and then you can look at it and see and look for hidden meanings in your data. Maybe you want to rotate a little bit to a different side to look at it. That's what's really neat about this this uh, plot right here that you can do that um, with this 3D scatter plot. So again, there it is. You know, and when it's small like this, you're not going to want to have as big of uh, dots or points as you will when it's big. Um, here's the code, so you can see it. Let me get rid of this. There's the code right there. It's very simple. Install packages, uh, RGL, library RGL, library read Excel, and then I bring in my data set. This is very easy to use. And then there's just one line right here. Plot 3D, parentheses, your three ver or your three fields, and your color and the size. Very simple to do. And uh, you know you can change this up. I could make this six. I could make it black if I want. Let's say I just want black. I just want to be dull and have a black colored graph. That's fine. Sometimes it looks better that way. It depends on the data you're looking at, but let's just put that in there. There we go. Let's bring it up and there it is. So there you have it. How to do 3D scatter plots that are, you know, that's pretty cool. You can just move it around to get more meaning out of it. That's just really neat. A nice thing to do in our studio in R. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.